s'en allant et en s'envolant. Et les gens, l'argent serait du vent. Here we are just about 15 kilometers west of Honiara, the capital of uh, Guadalcanal and Solomon Islands. And here, finally, I see this so common plant in all tropical gardens and the glass houses of the world. But here we see it in its native habitat. It's uh, Alpinia purpurata. And we can see that actually the plant is much bigger than the varieties commonly cultivated in gardens and uh, we see also that it is fertile we see inflorescence with flowers with the white flowers emerging from the bracts this form is between red and pink the shape of the inflorescence is much more globose than the one usually cultivated and the plant is much bigger so, of course, it's very common plant all over the world. It's very interesting to see it in its native habitat.
here we see this so typical palm of all uh, this Pacific area, especially Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands and uh, so it's uh, very important because this metroxylon has a sagu palm and they are used for everything, the leaves for thatching, the type for houses and uh, of course before flowering they are cut and the stark from the heart of the palm is used in many different ways and especially in, uh, in New Guinea in the lowlands of New Guinea, there are very important traditions about the use of this palm as a food. Is it Myrmecodia? Yeah, this Myrmecodia has been falling from the tree on a dead branch, but hopefully many others are still on the branches. And Myrmecodia means that uh, Myrmecos ants love it. And when we see all these ooh, animals, even on my fingers, and we see the roots arising from the tuber and covering the branch and fixing the tuber to the branch. This is obviously a member of uh, Melastomataceae. I see this to the parallel nerves. Uh, and it has opposite leaves, but what is very special is that the two leaves are totally different. One is speciolate and has usual shape, and the other one is almost amplexical. She has no peciole at all, and the blade is totally overlapping the, the stem. Maybe it's a uh, close to Medinilla, there are many Medinilla species, maybe another genus, but it's a very special architecture. Here we see a member, a shrubby member of the Gesneriaceae family, a Sirtandra. It's interesting because uh, Sirtandra is a genus which is very well diversified in New Guinea, in Solomon Islands, in Fiji, and also in Polynesia, even Hawaii. So it's a really a genus of Asian origin which has a high diversification in New Guinea and all the Pacific Islands.
Beautiful Maranta. Yes, a beautiful member of Maranta C because uh, usually they have quite small, insignificant flowers, but this one has very long tube and uh, very crispy lobes of uh, petals. Very nice. It's a stemless species. So this uh, small shrub, Herbaceus is strange because we see something in the middle which seems to be a fruit from probably a terminal flower and when we look the leaves are entire, they are opposite and everywhere we see these structures which are really stipules so actually it's a member of Rubiaceae but it has very big amplexicol totally encircling and bracing the stem so it's a interesting small shrubby Rubiaceae a little bit similar to some some species we can see either in South America or in Africa uh, like a stipularia, which was before the genus stipularia in Africa, for instance, in tropical Africa, or the, or the huge ones in Amazonia. Here we see many climbing uh, members of the uh, Araceae, always a group of Epipremnum, Syndapsus and Raphidophora, also some potos. The most common is Epipremnum pinatum. We can see on many trees. We have seen Apres Raphidophora, maybe Raphidophora cortalsi or another closely related species. But here we see really a huge, a huge creature. The leaf is, uh, oh, maybe uh, 1.2 meters long, something like that, simply the blade, or at least one meter. We see the stem which reaches a good diameter, and it's uh, climbing. I, I could think maybe it could be a syndapsus, because I know in New Guinea and Solomon there are quite huge species of syndapsus. But uh, anyway, I think I did uh, maybe the biggest... Uh, the longest leaf of a Cambigarace I've ever seen. Even in South America where there are so many Cambigarace like Philodendron or some Anturium, some Monster. Wow. hope to find some aquatic plants. Of course, uh, not Cryptocrine or Barclaya, but something else. Maybe an aquatic schismatoglottis. But no, I did see nothing. But maybe in another part, I'll be surprised. Or not. So we'll see with this uh, unique uh, huge leaf. It's a sagittate. It's obviously a member of a Cirrhotosperma. It's a genus of a more or less aquatic plants and it is the shape of the leaf is characteristic and also the petiole which has spines and also in this species a very beautiful design. And we see also that the young leaves are somewhat orange pinkish orange 
so it's probably quite close to Cirtosama Johnstoni, which is uh, from New Guinea and also maybe from Solomon Island or maybe it's another species. Anyway, it's uh, very happy to see this plant that I know similar ones in botanic gardens all over the world. What is the natural habitat of this Alpinia purpurata? We can see here the natural habitat is mostly along the banks of rivers, quite small rivers in the forest. So here you, we see that all the bank, vertical banks are occupied by this Alpinia purpurata. So again, we see that this nat native form, natural form, is much bigger than the common ones cultivated in gardens. Also, it has not the bulbils at the base of inflorescence. It has simply the perfectly arranged rocks. It's a pity not to see this so beautiful plant in the garden because even in Honiara, in the city, we see that people prefer to cultivate the usual form produced for gardens. Here is a wild one. On this old inflorescence, we see the bracts are partly decayed or decaying. But what is very interesting, we see flowers, new flowers opening. And also here, I see a big, totally pink fruit here. And it's a strange because, for instance, just uh, two months ago in uh, Sulawesi, we did see that some other Alpinia species had the same phenomenon. On the same inflorescence, you have both new flowers and totally mat mature or maturing fruits.
I'm surprised, yes, I see growing all along the ground a, a piper, a climbing. It's a climbing species of piper, I think it's climbing, but actually I see it growing only along the soil. Maybe it could be the same as Piper sarmatosum. It's difficult to speak about soil because here it's uh, only <laughs> pieces of coral reefs broken on sand, coral sand. Due to the heavy rain, the plants can grow in spite of the very low fertile amount of the soil. And we see that humidity is so high because when we look at all the trunks, we see mosses and orchids germinating everywhere. This is really an outstanding species of Pardanus. I think maybe it's uh, the, the biggest leaved species I've ever seen. And it's growing typically along the beaches on this uh, coral soil. Here it's a still a young individual, not yet ramified, so it has a bigger size of leaves after when it becomes adult, the leaves are somewhat reduced and we see seedlings everywhere. We see the huge size of the seeds, bigger than most pandanus seeds. Probably it's floating because this species is so clearly associated to this beach forest. And here we see the seedling emerging from the big seed just at the top among all the hairy part at the top of the seed. Amazing, is it? Amazing! It's incredible! This forest of the pandanus, of the giant pandanus, everywhere, all the stage, it means regeneration is perfect. Oh, and the huge citas here also. A very old one. Always difficult to know which species it is, because usually in this area of the world, it's always mentioned Cycas rumfi, but actually it's quite restricted, so I don't know at all which species is this one. It has very narrow leaflets, much more narrow than many species of Cycas. Pandanaceae are well present here with the common Pandanus tectorius, the huge one, and here the climbing Fresinesia, and the leaves also are shiny, quite thick, and it has, it's not armed, and it looks a little bit like an orchid, orchids are so common here, and this Fresinesia is not yet branched, so it is only the main climbing stem. close to the giant one, a narrow-lived pandanus, and I think it's another species, not tectorius, but another one. So it's a so, so funny to see side by side, one pandanus, another pandanus, and the climbing Fresinesia. So three species of the same family, only this, uh, so except uh, Maybe this is uh, a young Flagellaria indica. Now it's not climbing, it looks like a grass or like a ginger, but actually it's a Flagellaria, so it will climb like a Gloriosa through the coiling leaf tip. Ah, and just here I see a climbing one, just like a vanilla, but it's just here. Here all the plants are the same structure, Thick leaves, somewhat succulent, and very shiny, probably reducing transpiration because the soil 
also is very rich in minerals, of course, uh, especially salt. Drainage is very strong, so probably as soon as there is one or two weeks without rain, the soil becomes very dry, so they need to reduce transpiration. So we see clearly the coiling tip of uh, the leaves. Flagellaria, the name is good because the leaf tip is like a flageliform part and it climbs, it climbs, it climbs. Yeah, this is uh, the very strange root cap, the protective root cap of the young stilt root of the huge pandanus and it's uh, incredibly tired in uh, many narrow elements, uh, quite yellow, and we see that actually they are progressively decaying and disappearing, protecting in a very efficient way the growing tip of the root. So here we see many seeds, germinating seeds of the huge pandanus and on this one we see that there are not only one emerging plantlet but three, sometimes two, so it's a really a kind of a polyembryony, I mean that instead of only one embryon in the seed we can have many like three for instance. Probably after some time only one is surviving. We can see the huge female fruit. Of course, if it's a fruit, it's a female tree. And when the seeds are falling to the ground, most of them exhibit this polyembryony. Almost always, we don't see only one, but two, again two, sometimes three, many together, and even on this one, we see there are five stems arising from a single seed. All the older individuals always are only one. So it means that after some time, the only one of these multiple seedlings in one seed survive because all the subadult and even the juvenile only are with one stem and never multi-stem. On the last uh, stems of this very tall individual, because I think it's about 18 or 20 meters tall, uh, we clearly see the hanging fruits. We see three hanging fruits. Uh, we can see clearly the establishment growth uh, of the trunk of uh, this pandanus, because at the beginning it is very narrow. We can see on the first root, stilt roots are here, and then after each new stilt root, the diameter of the stem increases. Especially, we see strong difference as soon as the roots become very big, heavy diameter, and finally it reaches its maximum size. Maybe here with this new stilt root, it reaches the maximum size at about 1.5 meter above the soil.
l'école secondaire. So here we did just arrive on the Vanguno Island in the New Georgia province in the western province. So we are not so far from Bougainville Island which belongs to Papua New Guinea. But here we are in the last big islands of the Solomon Islands. And here we are just close to the sea and I'm surprised to see here something with white flowers. At first I did think it was a begonia because the white part looked like a begonia tepals but when looking more closely first I see that the leaves are opposite uh, impossible for a begonia the nerves also three nerves for the base impossible and when I look more closely I see actually that these white structures are not petals but are bracts enclosing flowers it is a member of Melastomataceae and it is one of the climbing species of Medinilla because here it's the same also as in Fiji. There are many species endemic here from Solomon Islands. And this Medinilla looks a little bit like the one emblematic from Fiji, but which is red and totally different. This one is pure white, very long, hanging in fluorescence, really looking like a begonia in fluorescence. It's the first time I see a Medinilla like this. Medinilla is a huge genus, all the species we can find here are totally particular and strictly endemic. Happy to see this. So here in this quite swampy area we are in a kind of forest of bonsai and these bonsai actually look like tree ferns. It is another member of Hymenophilaceae, probably a trichomanes, and we can see clearly the trunk made of the base of the old leaves and the roots growing inside the base of the leaves and reaching the soil. So all this population of tiny tree fern like uh, like bonsai of tree ferns. It's very beautiful and we see the young leaves and we see it's a filmy fern because only one layer of cells and we see it's totally transparent. This means if this plant can grow like this it means there is a very heavy rainfall and we know since we are in Solomon Island we have almost every afternoon or every night rain but hopefully the morning are very good weather. So when you see this kind of plants it means you have a lot of rain in the area. So it's very rich. It's always very interesting when we have a lot of rain. Maybe not so easy to walk, but good for the plants. <laughs> another ginger of the Alpinia genus but now genus Alpinia has been cut into many smaller genera but actually between uh, the few areas in Guadalcanal we had the opportunity to visit and uh, here now in uh, New Georgia we did see already six different species of this Alpinia group so it's very characteristic of the understory of this forest. Many of these species are quite big because usually they are growing in clearings or close to water where there is more light.
here in this patch of quite protected forest, we see many interesting plants, the climbing fern of the Drinaria group, and another very strange fern. The genus is no doubt is Angiopteris, but it's a very small species of Angiopteris. Usually it's a huge, but it has the characteristic plastic like leaflets the small parts of uh, the front. It has also the swollen part at the base of each secondary part of the leaf. And it's uh, usually on the terrace of leaves which are uh, four, five, six meters long, but this one is much smaller. Or maybe it's a Maratia, but Maratia and Geopteris are very close. It's a very primitive group of ferns. Maratia C is very primitive. And uh, this one is very elegant. Not only first time I see it, but also very elegant fur. A small uh, understory tree. Very small, about three, four meters high. It has quite big leaves. And when we look more closely at the leaves, we can see it's a ficus, what Pascal did spot when moving, is this. Actually, this is the inflorescence of this ficus, and it's a group of ficus which have kind of a flageliform shoot reaching the soil, branching. We see here another axis beginning, and the figs are here. The figs are very characteristic with these bracts, green bracts protecting the fruit. So they will be growing all along the soil and with ramification later. Plus, je vais être un 5 arboricole. Ça, ça c'est vraiment typique d'ici, ça. Tu as ouais, vu les doigts Ça, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est Sasisa <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. 